churches is the sanctity of human life, Sunday. And I'll ask Melda, she'll come. She's our WMU director and she's going to share some things with you this time. says it all. Sanctity. As a noun, it's the state or quality of being holy, sacred, or saintly. The ultimate importance and inviolability. Synonyms, holiness, saintliness, sainthood, sacredness. Thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Rama, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Jeremiah 31, 14 through 16. Sanctity of Human Life Sunday is held on the first Sunday in January. It falls closest to the day on which Roe versus Wade and Doe versus uh, Bolton decisions were handed down by the U.S. Supreme Court in January 22, 22, 1973. Sanctity of Life Sunday began in uh, 1983 when the Christian Action Council, now known as CareNet, founded with the help of Francis Schaeffer and the former Surgeon General C. Everett Coop asked President Ronald Reagan to create a special day to focus on the intrinsic value of human life. Now, in its 40th year, Roe's historic nature is waning in the public consciousness, particularly among the millennium generation. According to a recent Pew Research Center poll, one out of every five Americans does not know what Roe was about. Among Americans under 30, just 44% know Roe was about abortion. So please take an opportunity this weekend to consider how God may be calling you to care for the lives and freedoms of even the weakest of our fellow human beings. Thank you. Thank you. Bible. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. I want to begin reading with verse 15. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with verse 15. It says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, <coughs> redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding that what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, which in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come here to proclaim your word, to sing these old hymns, and to truly, truly worship you. I pray that we've come for no other purpose than to worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us, Lord God, in the next few moments now to get our eyes up off the things of this earth and look full in your wonderful face. 
And when they do, the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Father, I pray that there's one here this morning who has never accepted you as their personal Savior, that today they'll open up their hearts and invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come in. And for Christians, help us, Lord God, to live our lives in your will, being and doing what you have called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to continue with what I started a couple of weeks ago talking about the fear of the Lord. What does it really mean to live in the fear of the Lord? Does it mean that we need... Uh, live daily in the constant fright and fear of something's really going to happen to us, something bad's going to take place in our lives? Does it mean that God's going to uh, use a club on us or something of that nature? Does it mean we have to walk around, you know, uh, trembling about everything? It is unfortunate there are many in our society who grew up in homes or physical or emotional abusive parents. Some might confuse the fear of the Lord with, with fear that they knew when they lived with an abusive father or a mother. But all of this is really foreign to uh, the biblical concept of fear of God. The Hebrew word means to stand in awe of God, to stand before the Lord with reverence and respect, the word describes one who recognizes the power, the purity, the position of another and offers respect unto that individual. The New Testament word is basically the same thing. It means as we stand in awe of God, we want Him to control our lives. We want Him to be number one in our lives. We want Him to lead and direct our lives. When we read the fear of the Lord in Scripture, it's not there to move us to the uh, fear of you know, being knocked down or embarrassed in some way or another. It's the thought of bowing before Him in reverence, acknowledging that He is in control, worthy of response, uh, our response uh, ability, our love, our praise, and our honor and worship. Now we wonder about, we, we wonder about why it is in this society that we live in. Why our society has failed so much? We talk about Roe versus Wade. Did you know that since that came into law, over 50 million babies have been aborted. I don't know what it is right at this time. But do you really, do you really think that that doesn't bother God? Someone said to me the other day, he said, well, you know, we live in a society where it makes no difference anymore. If you're young, they'll kill you, and you getting pretty old, this guy said to me, I think he was joking. He said, that you're getting pretty old and pretty soon they'll kill you. Well, that may be true. It could come to that because when you come to the place where life doesn't really, really mean anything, anything can take place. You see, I think the problem is, is what I'm talking about. If there's no fear of the Lord, there's no fear of God before their eyes, Romans 3.18 says. And this carried, by the way, this carries over into the church. I don't know where you know this or not, but divorce in the church is running rapid. When I was a young kid growing up, you hardly had ever heard of a Christian getting divorced. Now, it's not only in pew, but it's in pulpit as well. And the church is shocked. Families are devastated. And people cry out, how can this happen? How can this happen? I'll tell you how it happens. 
because there's no fear of God before their eyes. You know, you know today there's little respect for authority. Paul admonishes us to submit to one another and to fear the Lord. <laughs> I think this is the root of a growing problem of submission that we have <coughs> to authority. To authority in the home, to authority in the school, <coughs> to authority in the workplace. <laughs> you know, when, when walking in the fear of the Lord becomes a forgotten concept in the church, well, you know why it happens everywhere else. A lack of submission to authority follows uh, as naturally as water running downhill. You know, the early church, our first sermon about this was the early church. They lived under tremendous pressure. They were being persecuted. All of these things by the Roman Empire. Yet, they continued to grow. They continued to serve the Lord and continue to be what God had called them to be. You know why? And on practically every page in the book of Acts, you'll find that they stood in the fear of the Lord. Today, church, the church, by the way, today is under attack. Uh, not, not from without so much. Government's not trying to tell us what to preach and when to preach or what. Uh, when we can open or what, that may come, I don't know. But it's, it, it's from the inside, you see. In fact, we seem to be living that out the words of the little book of Jude. Jude speaks of a day when the church would be led and attended by those without fear of the Lord. Oh, he describes that church leaders are like hidden reefs, clouds without water, trees without fruit, wild waves of the sea, <laughs> wandering stars. Well, you know, all you have to do is just pick up your newspaper, you know all of that's going on. Down here in our center where we uh, have all our activities, something two weeks ago, a group of about 200 met to hear all about it. all of these different kinds of religions, different kinds of things, all of that, and how you can be healed, and all of these things. I want to say to you, my dear friends, that we have truly come to the place where there is no fear of the Lord God Almighty. God knows where we are. He knows what we're doing. He knows who you are as an individual. He knows where you are in your life, your family, and He knows what this nation is all about. In our Sunday school lesson this morning, I hope you read it. I hope you, uh, if you haven't been to Sunday school, that you attend. But it talks about the fact that God is working and He's not going to put up with people doing things that are not right in the sight of God. <laughs> if, it, if there's ever been a generation that need to heed the little book of Jude, it's now. It's our generation. We need to really, truly understand what's taking place. Millions of people this morning, right now, or within an hour maybe, will be in church. If all of these people who go to church were truly God's people and living in fear of Him, we would change our society overnight. Things would be different. But you know what? You see, I, I think there are a lot of Christians who are not really living in fear of the Lord. But I was ordained to preach. They call all, I was out in Texas, and I was in the, the Dogwood Trail Association. Beautiful name, boy, I'm telling you. But you know what? They call all the churches, 
and the leaders of the church to come and ordain me. Well, you know what? I thought I had it all together. I'd been to college, I'd been to seminary, I had it down, I'd already been preaching. I'd been licensed. They, they licensed me, see, to preach. I thought I would do quite well. But those old-timers, listen, those old-timers knew their business. They didn't ask me about my background, where I come from, where I've been to school, what had happened. They asked me what I knew about the Holy Word of Almighty God. I can still remember that. They wanted to know if I knew about the Word of God, what it said, what it meant. And then, old Dr. Thunderbird, what a name. I still can see that old fellow. He hit me with it right on top of the head. He said, young man, you seem to have it all together. But let me ask you this. Are you walking in the fear of the Lord? And I thought, walking in the fear of the Lord? I, you know, I didn't hardly know what he was talking about, but I said, yes. And then he explained to me what the fear of the Lord was all about. He said, it's not fear of God will put his hand of punishment upon you, young man. But it's a fear that God will take his hand off of you. It's a fear of him taking his hand of blessings and anointing off of me. Boy, that's stuck with me to this day. I don't want, I live in the fear of God that when I preach, that he won't take his hand off of me. I, I, I just, I pray that everything I do will be done to honor and glorify him. You see, the point of this, living in the fear of the Lord, you know what it means? We are to live our lives in such a way that we do not want to go any place, say anything, do anything that would cause God to remove his hand of blessing from you. Think about it. Amen. Oh, listen to me. Sometimes Christians, they're out there and they're doing things and they're saying things and in places they shouldn't be and they act in ways they shouldn't act. All of that. They have no fear of what God sees and what God knows. Listen to them. Don't you live your life in a way that God will remove his hand of protecting and anointing and blessing from you. That was what Paul meant when he revealed to the Corinthian church that he feared when he preached the word of God to others that he might himself be disqualified. What? <laughs> By the way, a lot of people have the little of uh, the prayer of Jabez, you know, hung up. That's what that prayer means. <laughs> when we begin to walk in the fear of the Lord, God grants unto us a supernatural power with the ability to overcome sin. Solomon, he reminds us of that. He said to fear the Lord. If one fears the Lord, he will depart from evil. Proverbs 16, 6. Moses told the people after receiving the law that God is going to test you to see if you stand in the fear of the Lord. And if you stand in the fear of the Lord, May it be that you will not sin. When we walk, listen, when we walk in the fear of, of the Lord, He will impart wisdom to us. And He wants to do that. 
He does that so we might make wise decisions with our life's choices. Remember uh, Proverbs 19? All of you remember that from our uh, study of the book of Proverbs, don't you? It just simply says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. David said, The secrets of the Lord are with those who trust Him. You know, some wonder, some people wonder why they read God's Word and they get nothing out of it. The reason the secrets of the Lord are with those who fear Him. And if you come to the Word of God and start reading and you have no fear of God, you're not going to get anything out of it. Because you know, really, Recognize who God is, His authority, all of that. You know what? Living in the fear of the Lord is also a channel which, uh, through which the Lord's mercy flows to us. Psalms 103.11 says, Great is His mercy to those who fear Him. When we're walking in the fear of the Lord, it brings joy to the Father's heart. Psalms 147. You know what? When you read the Word of God, you find that the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear Him. Well, you know, the fear of the Lord is an unconscious awareness that God is watching over us. He knows who I am. He knows where I'm going. He's watching over me. You see, what does it mean to walk in the fear of the Lord? Well, it's a constant awareness of our awesome and powerful God. I, I don't know about you, but here's what it means to me. It means that I have in my heart and in my life a desire that I will do nothing or say nothing or even think anything that would cause this, the Lord God Almighty to take His hand off my life. That's me. I don't know about you. Oh, you see, I want His blessings. I want His anointing. I want His mercy. I want His grace. But when I look at the Word of God, I must pray. Pray that He will not take His hand of grace from off of me. And how am I going to do that? According to the Word of God, that I stand in awe of Him, knowing who He is. He's God. He's Almighty God. He's the great I Am. He's in control of this universe. He's in control of my life. Well, I don't want Him to ever take His hand of protection from me. No wonder it's said of that early church Oh, that they lived in the fear of the Lord. And the Lord blessed them, and they increased daily. And a great number of people believed. Why? Because they feared the Lord. They weren't afraid that God was going to hit them or beat them or anything like that. They were afraid that if they were doing the will of God in their lives, that God would take His hand of protection away from them. Take His honor, His glory, all that from their lives. Great numbers were added to the church. 
Because the church, according to the book of Acts, lived in fear of the Lord. Christian, let me ask you a question this morning. Are you walking in fear of the Lord? Really, honest, you think about it now for a moment. Are you walking in fear of the Lord? That if you do something, say something, you know? Yes, you can come to Him for forgiveness. He will forgive you. And He wants to forgive you. <laughs> but you know what? Walking in the fear of the Lord is afraid that he'll take his hand of protection, his anointing, his grace from you. Are you walking in the fear of the Lord? Hmm. Lost person, let me ask you this question this morning. Why, why haven't you given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? Why haven't you realized that the only way to live is to trust Jesus as your personal Savior and let Him lead and direct your life? It's not hard to do. Romans 10, 9 says, If I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, he will save you. That's all you have to do. It's as easy as ABC. You admit that you're a sinner. We've all sinned, come short of the glory of God. For a lot of people, that's hard. They, they, they hate, they just cannot admit that they ever sin. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that He left His throne in glory, came to this earth, died on a cruel cross, and He did it. Why? Because He loves you and He wants to save you. And then confess your sins. And when you do that, you know what? <laughs> You don't want to walk in fear of the Lord. I don't believe that there's any Christian who really is truly one of God's children would want to do something that would hurt, cause him harm, cause him to take his hand from off of you. Paul said, I, I preach the gospel. I, I do my best. But he realized that God was the one who did it. God was the one who spoke through him. And because of that, he did not want God to take his hand to protect him from him. Are you walking in the fear of the Lord? I don't know about you. Today, we celebrate the day of human sanctity of life. Life is very important. I do not understand and cannot understand how anyone could kill an innocent baby. And we've talked about this before. But dear friends, I want you to know this. God knows what you've done. And if I had anything to do with anything like that, I would be afraid. I'd be afraid. I'd stand in fear of what God might do. Not that he would hit you and beat you cause you get sick or anything of that nature, but that he might remove his blessings from you. Mm. Now, I know what all of you think. You're talking to the wrong group, preaching. 
Why are you talking about babies? Well, I, I believe this. When you have no fear of God and taking an innocent life, it wouldn't bother you to kill someone. Some older person. Why, perhaps, and perhaps you're coming to that day. One of the things people are talking about now, you know, one of the way, best ways to deal with Social Security is when you're 65 years old, just put you to sleep. <laughs> See, you would save billions of dollars right there. If you're absolutely right. I don't know who said that, but it is no laughing matter. <laughs> Because, dear friends, it may come. Father, I realize that we're talking about some things that are so very important. But help us, Lord God, to walk in the fear of the Lord. I pray in my own life, oh God, I pray that you'll just never take your hand of protection your hand of blessings from off of me. Oh, I, I thank you and I praise you. But Lord God, I would pray too that I'd never do anything, say anything, go anywhere that would cause that to happen. <clears throat> Just help me to stand in awe of who you really are. You're the creator. You're the sustainer. And I want to be in your will, Lord. And I want to do your will. Father, forgive us where we failed you. I know that all of us have made mistakes. And I've made many. But I know you'll forgive us. And I pray, Lord, that whenever we do something, we'll cry out to you asked you to forgive us and I know you will. Lord this morning we pray if there's one here who needs to give their heart to Jesus they'll do it just now as the Holy Spirit speaks to them. And for those of us who are Christians Lord help us to truly understand that we should be more afraid of what you could do than what the government or what society might do to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's in your name we pray and ask these things. Amen.